What's up? Brian Tong here with the Apple Bits for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And hey, let's just get to the good stuff. The public betas for iOS 13, iPadOS, macOS Catalina, and tvOS 13 are available now if you've signed up for Apple's public beta software program. And it's easy to set up. Just go to the site and follow the instructions to download the beta over the air on your devices. And please make sure you back up your device first before doing any of this. But you all know my advice, do not install this on your primary device and then complain if it's buggy because it's a beta. I mean, yeah, sure you can. I know lots of you will, but remember, it's a beta. And if there was one product that I don't mind putting the public beta on, that's my primary device, it's gotta be the Apple TV. And this is actually really easy to do. All you have to do is jump into the settings, then go down to system, and then software updates. From there, go to get beta updates, and then click on it to turn it on. You'll hit a couple of options to agree to get the beta updates. And once the latest software is available to download, you can then install it. And voila, you have the latest tvOS Apple public beta. Now, some people, but not everyone, are lucky duckies and getting access to watch OS 6 through select Apple seed members, which allows for some non-developers to test out the software for the very first time. It's really a version of the public beta that's invite only and more selective. You can't even apply for it. So if you get access to it, you're special, just like your mom told you. Now the most exciting stuff happening this year is honestly with iPadOS and watchOS. So I'm juiced for all of this, especially for you all that finally get to play with it. Now the other big news, the long rumored MacBook Pro 16 inch is expected to launch in September according to research from firm IHS Market. After the 15 inch MacBook Pro speed bumps before WWDC, my hunch was that they wanted to get that out of the way, clear the runway for the all new 16 inch MacBook Pro and it looks like that's exactly what they're doing. According to IHS Market, they believe the 16 inch display will be supplied by LG display with a 3072 by 1920 pixels. Now the current 15 inch has a resolution of 2880 by 1800 for comparison. We've heard the reports that Apple and Samsung have been in talks for supplying OLED displays for Apple 16 inch portable as well as OLED displays for future Apple products like iPads. But this report says that they will be using LG's display LCD screens for this MacBook Pro. Now the report also doesn't explicitly say if the screen is just 16 inches or slightly larger with many of the rumors placing it somewhere between 16 and 16 and a half inches, but I'm rooting that we get at least 16.5 here to get us close to those glory days of the 17 inch MacBook Pro because when you go from 15 to 16 inches, it isn't that big of a difference. Now we're expecting obviously an all new design and the 16 inch MacBook Pro is expected to feature an all new processor as well. I have a whole bunch of wishes that I put together for my own 16 inch MacBook Pro wish list that you all should check out. A couple of my top requests, get rid of the touch bar, bring us the revamped keyboard that's worthy of the thousands of dollars we're putting down. Like I don't wanna see the keyboard for the new 16 inch MacBook Pro added to the Apple keyboard service program on day one like the 2019 MacBook Pros were, because you know what? That's a bad Apple. Mm -hmm. IHS Market also reports Apple plans to refresh the MacBook Air line with faster processors, and the MacBook Pro 13-inch without a touch bar is expected to potentially get a speed bump as well. All right, leaked pics of the Apple card are out in the wild after Apple has opened it up for testing for both its corporate and retail employees. iMore provided up close pics of the card that has the Apple logo on the front with the user's name in black, but obviously it's been hidden. The backside has the Goldman Sachs and MasterCard logos and it weighs in at almost half an ounce or about 14.75 grams. Now I'm not gonna lie, I want that thing even if I don't need it. And lots of you are watching and thinking the same thing even if you don't use it. But if you have a business account at an Apple store, you can get the 3% back on the card on top of those business discounted purchases. That works for me. I'm also curious how it will visually break down your spending in the app as well because you know we're all gonna justify this and find reasons to get it. All right, if you like this video, you know the drill. Thumbs up, subs up, and hit that notification bell to get all my latest videos and if you want to dig deep inside the world of apple check out my weekly apple bits xl audio podcast where we dive into the stories that matter and you can support all of my independent work including the podcast and more at patreon.com slash brian tong that's gonna do it for now thanks so much for watching take care and we will see you soon see you